anybody was asked to uh, close their eyes and imagine a whiskey distillery, I think if you just opened them and saw Glengoyne, that would have been the imagination. It's a picture postcard whiskey distillery. It's like the world stands still here. Everything goes on round about us. We were all like just one big family, to be honest with you. We're a small unit, but a family unit. It's a beautiful distillery. It's all a small distillery, but it's beautiful. It's a great good product too. <laughs> good driver. It's a good drink. Glengoyne was one of perhaps 18 or so illicit distillation processes happening on the hills. And in 1833, a local farmer called George Connell was, uh, took out the first licence to distill whisky in the area. And we know that George learned at the feet of his grandfather, as it were. So for at least two generations before 1833, the Connell family had been uh, up to no good in the area. In 1909, a customs officer at Glengoyne by the name of Tedder was chiefly responsible for setting the guidelines to which we still distill to this day. Things like the three-year minimum maturation time, the, the use of oak casks, the size of the oak cask. And really, so we can to say that modern whisky was defined at Glengoyne just over 100 years ago. The watchers at the distillery had a job supposedly to watch for the, for the government for the taxation on whisky. Um, you couldn't do anything without the watcher being there. The last one was Willie the watcher. So what we used to do was, they days you had wee plunky bottles. So we got wee plunky bottles. So we used to sample a bottle about that size, you tied a bit of string in it, and of course all the barrels had caught bungs in them. So, and a bit of hessian, so you pulled the bung and the hessian out, you put the wee bottle in and you filled it. So if the watcher came, you just dropped the lot in and hit the bung down and that was it. You couldn't do anything about it. So, uh, but later on, when the casts were going out, there were a lot of clinkers. <laughs> so for a hell of a bottle left some of the casts. Just to clink on out that door. <laughs> we not do that now? No, no, we don't do that <laughs> <laughs> Whiskey production is a fairly simple process. You, you've got three raw ingredients. You have the water which comes down from the hill, we have the malted barley and we have the yeast. The malted barley is air dried and unpeated. So what you've got is a barley there which just comes to us and it just smells like malted barley. Some distilleries would have a barley that has a peat introduced during the kilning process to introduce flavour compounds Whereas Glengoyne, we specify absolutely no phenols whatsoever because we want to make sure that every flavour you, you get in the process is our influence. It's what we've done to introduce that spirit character, not so much what the monster's done. So what we do basically is we get 3.72 tonnes of malted barley and we just grind it into a grist. And the reason we grind it is just to get to the heart, to get to the sugars of the actual malted barley themselves. It then goes into the mashing process and what you do there is you just get in water and uh, this grist and you mix them together at the right temperature, half a degree up, half a degree down and that's not a good day, it's got to be spot on 63.5 degrees. So we extract this sugar liquid called wort put it into the wash bags, which are the fermenters, and then we just add 50 kilograms of yeast into 19,000 litres of warts. And the yeast comes from a fridge, so it's very cold, it's at three degrees. Drop it into a wash bag, and we put it into a liquid, which is 18 degrees. And the yeast then adapts to its surroundings, and it starts taking in the sugars, taking in the carbohydrates, and it starts converting it into alcohol, and converting it into carbon dioxide, and eventually it becomes so good, so successful what it does, it actually starts killing itself off because the alcohol becomes so, so strong at 8%, it just dies away. Now we do this for about 56 hours and that's important to us, that is key. 
Any less than that and you go from one spirit character to another. Any longer and you can go from one spirit character to another. Less is more of a problem than a long time for Glengoyne. All the flavours are in the washback. So everything's in there. You know, you've, you've got your you've got your fruitiness, you've got bubble gum, and whatever every distillery wants, it's generally in the washback. Now it's what you do in the distillation will magnify them or it'll subdue them. That's where we really start influencing the Glengoyne flavours. We start putting our fingerprint on the product. We're really quite slow. I don't mean the guys are slow themselves, but the, the process is slow. The shape of the stills at Glengoyne is unique. The amount of copper in the process at Glengoyne, you couldn't get any more copper in the process if you tried. Everywhere there's copper in the pipes. We have a, a ball on the side of the stills just so you've got as much copper in the process. So this alcohol, when it comes through, it's got as much copper contact to remove some of the unwanted characters from the fermentation. Sulfur is a good example. Copper removes sulfur very, very well. That's why we have it in the pipes. And we just nurse the alcohol through the distillation process. This is where we could really be mercenary and speed things up if we just turn that steam valve a lot faster than it is. But we can't, because as soon as we turn that steam valve, you've lost clean going. I work with three stills at Glen Goyne. Um, I've got a wash still and two spirit stills. And the wash still is a traditional Highland pot still. It's onion shaped, they're all copper. Charlie pumps the contents of a wash back over to me. We heat it up to 78 degrees. It starts to vaporise. Vapour goes up towards the line arm through the boiling bowl. The boil pot actually slows the process down in the still and it means longer contact with the, with the copper and the lighter spirits go over into the condenser, the heavier spirits fall back into the boiling bowl. This process is called reflux. The lighter spirits that do go over the top are very estuary, fruity in spirit, and that is our new make Glen Glen. We've got to redistill this, right, or refine it, whatever way you want to call it. I've got two other stills I mentioned earlier, the low wine stills. They're both the same size, and I split the contents of the low wines receiver into the two stills. As soon as the stills start running, I reduce the flow rate to five litres per minute maximum, which is very slow. Other distilleries can be nine, 12, 15 litres per minute on, on spirit. That five litres just gets the right, what's called the congeners, which is the taste, the smells, the flavours of the whiskey. It just pushes the congeners with the, with the right weight over the neck of the still. You get six litres and you're pushing some of the heavier ones over, or if you went down to four, then it's only the lighter ones that are getting over. We've got to be at that five litres on spirit just to get the Glengoyne spirit character coming through. Now when I get the clarity and the strength right, I can then redirect that flow of five litres a minute spirit into a spirit safe into what we call the centre bowl or the spirit bowl. That's me collecting new make Glen Goyne. It's full of esters, it's fruity, um, it will run for roughly three hours, slowly going down in strength. And I've got to monitor this closely till I get the strength down to about 64%. Once the spirit goes down to 64%, we've still got a lot of spirit left in that still, but it's not pure enough to be termed as a middle cut. So what I do is I redirect the flow to the outer bowls, which puts it back to where it came from, the low wines receiver. My middle cut's collected, that's taken care of, that's separate, that'll be pumped down to the filling hall, it'll be reduced slightly in strength and put into selected sherry casks to start the maturation, and that'll be it for 10, 17 or 21 years. I think well, we know that to make Glengoyne the way it is, it has to be done slowly. We have to do it slowly to get the flavours, to get all the esters and to get lots of copper contact. And I don't think it's a bad thing, things are, are slow. I think it's, you know, it's showing that we take time and to make what, what we produce here and it, and it works. We've been doing it this way 175 years plus. And our, our stillman today, 
does it because he learnt to do it that way from a man who probably started working here in the mid 50s. That's the sort of length of time that we're that we're getting with the people that make the whisky, and it's just that knowledge and that passion handed down from one stillman to the next. We know that if we take things slowly, if we simmer the spirit, if we nurse, nurse it through the stills, we we'll end up with this great sweet dram. And to change the speed of distillation would just change us out of all recognition. The majority of the new casts that we source for Glengoyne have come from Spain, and we're involved in that from the from the very start. El envejecimiento de whisky en botas tiene un proceso muy importante para sobre todo los aromas y el color del whisky. Nuestro proceso de fabricación es muy largo y, y complicado. Empezamos desde el norte de España cortando los árboles, fabricando las duelas y después hay un proceso de secado totalmente natural, fabricación de la bota y después, una vez fabricada la bota, pasa un periodo de dos años mínimo de envejecimiento con oloroso, que le da un carácter especial a las sherry cags. Para los whiskies de alta calidad, como Glengoyne, eh, es muy importante los aromas que aporta el vino de Jerez. The sherry will stay in there for about 28 months. The sherry is then emptied from the casks. The casks are broken down, sent over by ship, reassembled by our coopers. And nearly six years after we first commissioned that cask, we get to fill it with Glengoyne. warehouses that we're, we're sitting in now, these are the very traditional, what they call Dunnage style of warehousing. So they're brick built and they allow for a relatively even cool atmosphere. I mean, it does get extremely cold in the winter, but it will not get overly hot in, in summertime because the cask, now they are breathing, spirit will evaporate. As soon as you open that door, you get that lovely smell from these casks and you can't beat that. Imagine a good marriage. So a good marriage where there's give and take, and that is a good cask. A whiskey cask will absorb and adsorb. So we get the new make spirit coming from the still house. So you pump it down and it hits the cask tomorrow. You've got a layer inside the cask, which is this active charcoal layer. Now this active charcoal layer, when you put new, new make spirit into it, that will remove the, uh, the immature qualities of the spirit. It will then start giving, it'll start giving the colour from the oak, it starts giving that sherryness if there's any sherry and eventually after 17 years you get something which is as good as that which is a 17 year old Glengoy. It's not a perfect science, no, no, nobody knows what each cask is going to do because you can fill 100 casks in a row and there'll be 100 different whiskies coming out of those casks. It's our master blender's challenge to create a consistent nose, flavour and, importantly, natural colour. Our whisky needs to taste the same year in, year out, so that, for example, the 10-year-old must always taste like 10-year-old. It's one of the most challenging but vital roles in the whole industry, and we'd say a good master blender is definitely worth his weight in gold. The whisky that I'm drinking is from 100% procedencia de a bottle of sherry de Roble Español. Entonces es muy fácil identificar sus caracteres. Tiene un fantástico color, unos aromas que me recuerdan muchísimo a los olorosos de Jerez y está fantásticamente, es complejo y está fantásticamente conceptuado. Es mis preferidos. Glengoyne is a range of whisky throughout which the flavours develop as, as, as it goes on and as the whiskies get older. But the underlying themes, if you like, are firstly that there's no smoke at all in Glengoyne. The barley has been malted and dried just using warm air. Secondly, we distill slowly, which gives these wonderful, light, sweet, fruity flavours. And thirdly, we, we source the best casts in the world. I think one of the main characteristics for Glengoyne is the apples. We always talk about apples coming through and it's obviously got no peat in it but it's still a very complex whisky. There's still lots of flavours coming in. We make whisky the way we do because it, it's unique to Glengoyne for a start. It wouldn't suit all the, a lot of the big companies with the, 
the accountants wanting to quicken up. But going, going, um, we're left to do what we want to do the way we do it. We've kept this philosophy going for nearly 200 years. If I was to give the very first distillery manager a drink out of this glass, he would recognize it, I'm sure, as being something he produced back in 1833. It's a team effort um, from beginning to end, and, and I think that comes through in that bottle. When you open that bottle and you pour a dram out, that's us 